So continuing our discussion, let me try writing a piece of code which will find out the sum of n numbers. All right? So look at this. Uh, let me try coding it the naive way that we have been doing from a long time. How would that go? So let's say uh, assuming n equals 10, I will not take it as an input from the user. I will change the variable here itself. So I say for i in range n, okay. So what I do is I first say answer equals 0 and i in range n will simply what will this do let me print i as so that you can see it. it. It prints numbers from 0 to 9 and I'm going to be a little fast now because these things are very basic for you people. You probably should be able to do it in, in no time uh, or if you think you're unable to do it in no time then you need practice. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so print i. Uh, which means it starts from 0 and goes up to 9 but I want the first n numbers maybe I'll do i plus 1 I get 1 to 10 because that's what I need to add so what I'll do is I'll say answer equals answer plus your i plus 1 correct this will basically do the sum of first 10 numbers let me see if it gives me 55 print answer answer e is 55 that in fact is the answer for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 which is 55 all right so how do i put this inside a function define sum of n numbers is simply the same thing answer equals 0 this entire stuff should come inside and then for i in range n you do answer equals answer plus i actually but then you want from 1 to n not from 0 to n minus 1 a small trick there it should be easy on your minds then i say return answer okay execute this let me now remove this now that i have created a function out of it let me remove this what is the point of doing all these things you will understand in a second i'm going to introduce you people to a brand new idea in python Okay, so sum of 10 is 55, sum of 5 is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 which is 15, yeah perfect, my function is doing good. Okay, as and always it is nice to say verified just so that you know that this function is doing good and you needn't break your head. Now, is there a better way to write this function? By better I mean a different way to write this function probably yes I'll show you the different way and that is called that is called recursion in Python okay the word recursion what does what does recurse mean recurse means you um, recursive means do it again and again right that's what it means but in Python or in programming in general recursion is a very important concept which means the following let me not say what that is let me show you what that is look at this define sum of n if n is equal to 1 return 1 so sum of 1 we should be 1 right I mean so if n is equal to 1 sum of 1 is the first n natural numbers by default this should be 1 so what is sum of 5 15 but sum of 1 should be not 5 to 1 but just 1 alone the answer should be 1 so it should display 1 but if n is not 1 okay else means what if n is not 1 which means n is greater than 1 I'm not taking any negative numbers or 0 here so this should return what pause for a minute think sum of n is sum of n minus 1 plus n okay this must return n plus sum of n minus 1 pause for a minute and think what this is doing okay look at the power of this piece of code it looks very short it's not so straightforward in the mind but it takes time for you to digest but this is a very 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 powerful programming idea all right you will get to know as you advance into more and more programming you will realize that this thing called the recursion where you call the definition here itself 
the function inside the same function this is called recursion you may be wondering sir this the word sum is defined only here how does it know what to do here so your python is smart enough to understand that this very thing whatever you are doing inside happens at this level also this is exactly analogous exactly same as this one that we were talking about a function remember the component interest function the component interest at the nth year is component interest at the n minus 1th year times 10% more which is 1.1 okay basically 1 plus 0.1 it becomes 1.1 right so to calculate this function you use the same function and calculate a smaller number and add something to it that is what we are saying here if you expect this to return an error you are right but python has enabled this as a facility it lets you let me write that down python lets you call the same function within itself within the function so what what do you mean by this english my english sounds complicated all that i'm trying to say is this is a function and it can call the same function within itself what do you mean by this i mean this doesn't even sound like english this simply means you have a facility analogous to this right if you want to compute something you can define what this function is by using the same function this is just convenience and you can do it so let me see if this works or not let me come here and say print sum of 10 this should this should print 55 here let's see if it prints 55 yes it does 55 it it says 55 it means it's working so you can call a function within a function just to mimic the very mathematical way in which we define some things okay shall we go ahead now and find the component interest for n years of some principal amount what is that so help me out define compound interest instead of f let me call it comp okay compound interest of a principal sum of p over n years what is this equal to this is equal to before that let me let me uh, say verified because i'm going to write two to three functions here i am going to denote that it's done it's doing what it's supposed to do by saying verified this is just for convenience and also good documentation practice all right so define comp p comma n and what should i do now if n is equal to 1 okay if it's only one year then return p times 1.1 i'm assuming the interest to be 10% here okay compute compound interest i'm sorry for the typos compound interest by assuming the interest to be 10% so it's 1.1 or you can even put that as a parameter here so let's not complicate it I, i'm trying to explain what is a recursion to you people let me stick to a simple example return p into 1 1.1 but what if the number of years is more than 1 then i put else okay assuming n cannot be 0 or any other number it can only be 1 2 3 4 5 i'll say else means what n is greater than 1 then return whatever was the value for compound interest of a principal of p for n minus 1 years whatever that is you compute that okay you compute that and you multiply this by 1.1 and return that so what does this do to compute 1000 comma 2 it comes here it says n is not 2 it's 1 so it doesn't execute this part it comes here and it returns compound interest of principal with 1 year times 1.1 and for that again it comes here and then it 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 recursively evaluates this poof this is complicated this is not easy on your mind to see comp here and comp here so it takes some time to get used to it i i still remember when i was a student recursion did take me some time to even understand the very philosophy of it why would they put something like this where would they use something like this answer is simple the answer is in mathematics we do this in math 
there is something called recurrence relations if you haven't heard of it don't worry if you haven't heard but please note that in math we use functions like this to define something we use the same function with a smaller value so just to help you simply code these kind of functions onto a python program python helps you with this kind of facility so all the chatter and no answer let's see if this really works or not so how do i go about it i will i will comment this this is not required uh, or even delete it i'll say print compound interest of 2000 rupees for 3 years at the rate of 10% that's fixed it says 2662 let me just check that 2000 times 1.1 this is for first year right and this is for second year and this is for third year 2662 perfect that's what it's saying here right so my program is working fine i'll say verified okay so let me remove this and now let me go ahead and write the standard program factorial of n you know whenever someone teaches you recursion i believe from the past 30 40 or even 50 years people have been using factorial as a nice example okay so although you must be wondering where is factorial even used <laughs> okay so don't worry about that let us go ahead and try to compute factorial using the recursion way i will just type and you will just watch define fact n this will be if n is equal to 1 once again i will say return 1 fact of 1 is 1 else return fact of n minus 1 times n right this should work right so i have simply codified this part of the formula which i explained in the previous video this part of the formula using program okay so you know very well what will happen if i don't put this okay fact of n will be fact of n minus 1 into n and fact of n minus 1 here it again will call this function that will be fact of n minus 2 into n minus 1 and so on you see fact of n is fact of n minus 1 into n you expand this by using this formula then it becomes n n minus 1 into fact of n minus 2 where will this stop it can go on and on as n keeps getting smaller and smaller i stop it by saying that when n equals 1 the answer is simply 1 and you go ahead and calculate factorial of 2, factorial of 3, factorial of 4 and so on and so forth. Okay, let me execute this and then find out print factorial of 5. Factorial of 5 is 120. Is that true? 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Boom, there's a mistake there. 120, that's right. So factorial 5 is 120 and that's what is being displayed here. So my program is running perfectly right again i repeat a word of warning this can be heavy on your heads to begin with but don't worry with time you will get used to it all you need to do is boom look at this it helps you codify a typical mathematical statement like this that's all what your recursion does so this is the first introduction to recursion I, I suppose not many of you would appreciate it much you will appreciate it as we start using this in our code in the future right in many aspects of your forthcoming subjects you'll be using recursion extensively in fact so get used to it but don't break your head much if you cannot understand it completely or appreciate it uh, uh, completely so in fact I would like to tell you people that at this stage as we stop discussing one part of functions of course we'll go ahead and talk about a little more advanced aspects of functions in the forthcoming videos but then at this stage I would like to stop and tell you that forget even recursion for that matter go up to the matrix multiplication which was the uh, previous topic that we discussed this much is more than enough for you to start coding start coding and type some very advanced python programming in fact you are recruitable right now you can call yourself a python literate you can do good amount of programming with just this much whatever we have taught so far up to let's say matrix multiplication whatever we are going to go and teach ahead will be slightly advanced which you can always learn all by yourself right so uh, you should feel very confident right now you should feel more confident as we teach you more concepts all right then all the best let me uh, I, I will now take a break here and uh, um, 
your uh, our instructor omkar our friend omkar will now come, go ahead and teach you people more more codes more examples a little more advanced topics and we'll meet in the next week thank you all very much